As you may know, the popular show Ed, Ed and Eddie has been running for a long time, from 1999 to 2009. However, between October 7th and October 21st of 2003, episode 34 was accidentally released one week before it was scheduled to. It was also known to some that around the office the primary writer, Danny Antonucci, had been sick with the flu, and instead of going on to make episode 34, the show was supposed to replay episode 1. At 5 a.m. Eastern, people reported a very disturbing new episode premiering on Cartoon Network, and some children were unfortunate enough to see it. Apparently the quality of the episode was mediocre when held to the regular standards. The animation was choppy, and the sound was constricted and very muffled. Reports of a line running up and down, similar to a damaged VHS tape, were received. The scenery was described as overwhelmingly dark and depressing without changing crops and other background objects, and stormy looking. The characters also behaved oddly. Instead of the normal goofy, hijinks-inspired personalities, viewers complained they seemed extremely agitated and gratuitously hateful toward each other and constantly about to begin sobbing after the lines. The protagonist, Eddie, also had a very bad lisp. No one knows why, but he spoke with a sexual tone and that further bothered the viewers. I was one of those viewers. The episode began with Eddie walking down the street with Ed. I noted that Double D was missing. There was an angular shot, coming from in front of the two to show them walking toward the viewer. Eddie was wearing the angry look he does when something goes wrong, but his eyes were red around the iris. Ed looked absolutely forlorn and practically dragged behind Eddie with tears in his eyes, which were both lazy and looking in opposite outward directions. Kevin, the series antagonist, was riding his bike opposite of the Eds, toward them. The shot, the cane blurry and low moans, were heard coming from Eddie before Kevin hit him, which never happened because the screen went to black. The screen then snapped back and Kevin was again headed toward Eddie, but this time, the view was so blurry that all I saw was a green blob headed toward a yellow blob. Again, the low moan, only this time it sounded like the microphone, was broken and loud static chain, greatly overshadowing the moan. A claymation sequence of Double D sleeping in Eddie's bed came up. Honestly it may have just been the abruptness, but I jumped and shivered. Waking up and getting out of bed, he moved oddly around the circular room with a fast pitter-patter of footsteps, being the only audio. The steps' sounds were very clear as I was shown a bird's eye view of him scampering around the room. There were no visible doors. Double D began screeching, sounding like a fisher cat, as he moved wildly around the cell of a room faster and faster until the screen began blurring again, and the purple room's color started swallowing a now orange blur. An extreme close-up of Eddie's front door sat, in absolute silence, for a maddeningly long time, at least two minutes of dead silence and a door. Next we see Jimmy and Sarah at a doctor of some sort, probably oral. Jimmy, obstructed in view by a hanging lamp, is crying loudly, with Sarah trying to comfort him in an unusually warm fashion. It hurts Sarah, it hurts. Suddenly, the door of the room is smashed open by a new character, a dentist. His face wasn't shown because he was tall enough to be out of the shot. Sarah was escorted out of the room, and Jimmy was shown. His headgear was mangled, the front bent upward, stretching his lips very high, tearing proportions. The front of his gums was trickling blood, and his teeth were missing. The disturbing part was he had lost both arms and legs beforehand apparently, and sat a paraplegic. I almost cried as I came to the conclusion the others had beaten him up and bent his head gear. The camera stayed on his mangled face for a few seconds, still as a picture, silent as ever. The commercials came on. We are instantly assaulted with a very hairy Ralph in his darkened shed fisting the cow repeatedly. The visual loops and gets blurry again as the scene pans out. Naz is reading a magazine on her couch. The quality is now perfect. Eddie is now alone without Ed. The quality declines worse than before and he is still walking, the sun now lightening the mood somewhat as he smiles and begins running. The door is shown again and we see through Eddie's eyes as he reaches out and opens it. His house is nice and bright, but a very badly played violin is blaring the only audio in this scene as he makes his way through the house. Eddie opens the door to his room. Johnny is shown under Naz's couch cushion as he crawls out on all fours in a comedic way and pops up behind her, still oblivious. I left because someone forgot to draw his eyes and I thought of a mole. 
Suddenly I stopped laughing as he started swallowing her head, still in a cartoonish fashion of course, but this was different. Johnny and Naz stayed like this until Naz started kicking and struggling. Johnny held her like this until she went limp. A zoom in on his face revealed extremely small human eyes. Double D was laying on Eddie's floor, no longer in claymation. The camera showed Eddie's house for the remainder of the episode, about three minutes, and the next program began on the spot.